Welcome to the Delvin Cox Experience, the podcast in which each week I am on a one-man mission to unite our culture through diversity. I'm your host, Delvin Cox, and with me on the podcast is a special guest. Let him know who you are, brother. I'm Tyler, man. I'm MC Tyler Havlin, the big, the bald, the beautiful, the brash. I am the host of Inner Idiot Podcast, and let me tell you what, man. I am honored to be here. Like, you know when you're at the bar and there's this really hot chick? Yes. And you just you scared to go up to her. You're like that hot chick for me, man. You've been around for <laughs> right? So, so what I had to do before I even come on tonight, man, because I was getting nervous, I was sweating. I was like, you know what? I better get a strategic wank in before we get this. So I put your intro music on loop, and I just fucking rubbed one out. I gagged a girth worm. I should be good to go. I think I killed the nerve. <laughs> so hopefully I'm good. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that, brother. You're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. As always, we like to start the podcast off with the five for five. Five questions, five answers to get the ball rolling. Tyler, are you ready? Yes, sir. Question number one. What is the best album or song you listened to in the past year? And it does not have to be new. The best album, it's, it's hands down, All Eyes on Me by Tupac. I have said this a million and a half times. That album lives rent-free in my head, in my car, everywhere I go. That's what I'm playing. Great album. What's your favorite song off of it? Thug Passion. That album. That's a good Thug song. Passion. Just because I can remake it all the time. It don't matter what I'm doing. I can repurpose that song for whatever the fuck I'm doing. I like that. I like that. I, I love that album. That's probably my favorite album of all time. I love that album so much. Such a great album. Every song on there is great. They're all bangers. They're all fire. And I've I've probably bought that album at least 20 times. No joke. 20 times I've had to rebuy that album. I believe it. I believe it. It's, it's that good. That album is so good. Such a good album. I love that album. All right. Question number two. It's an interesting question. Let's see if you can answer it. All right. What is... And NFT, in your words. Oh, man. See, this where it gets difficult, man. I'm going to take my glasses off for this one because this one makes my goddamn brain hurt. <laughs> so so the other day I seen NFT farts in a jar and I clicked this shit, right? Okay. And motherfuckers are buying pictures of farts in a jar. Pictures of farts in a jar. So I guess wow. an NFT is just like an online picture of some shit that you just got to pay a lot of money for and it goes up in value. So like I've made some pictures, like I'm just going to just start taking pictures of myself and look, I fart a lot. So I'm going to fart in motherfucking jars. Look, I got a lifetime supply of gas ready to go. <laughs> so, I mean, non fungible tokens is what it stands for, but I think it means now farting timelessly. <laughs> that works for me. That works for me. All right. Question number three, Tyler. It's going to be a good one for you. What do you think is the dumbest thing you think you've ever done as a kid? Holy shit. Like, dude, limited this as a kid. Well, I I usually say college and under. That's how I describe kid. I did a lot of dumb shit as a kid. Uh, So there was this one time I stuck a crayon in my nose. I was probably 10 years old. I don't know why I stuck a goddamn crayon in my nose. I don't know, like, if a red crayon smelt different than a green crayon or what. But I stuck this bitch in my nose and the tip broke off. Oh. And my ass didn't tell my parents. And I went to the doctor like two months later and that motherfucker was just in there growing arms and shit. It like had teeth and 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 a mouth and eyes. Like they named it Fred and they pulled that motherfucker out my nose. They said, <laughs> where the fuck did this come from? That's bad. Um, that's one of the dumbest things I did. But then, as maybe not as a kid, but as a young adult, I broke my penis once. How the fuck and you this, broke your penis? Right? Let me tell you what. This was the scariest motherfucking moment of my life. I was at work. I was a lot younger. And I had this cabinet in my truck. And you could get in this cabinet. And you could urinate. There was a hole at the bottom of it. And it just drained right out the hole into the street. So I get in the cabinet. I'm fucking draining the main vein and I hear the handle fucking wiggle. So I think a customer's trying to get in my truck. So I pinch it off. Like I stopped peeing, right? 
Okay. Well, this was my first mistake. Never stop midstream because that motherfucker blew up. It just flowered. Like just the pressure Ooh. build up. Woo! Man, I'm telling you what, I thought I was going to fucking die. And there is a time to laugh at shit and there's a time to not. And when you go to the goddamn hospital and you're a nurse and you got my broken penis in your hand, it is not time to fucking laugh. That is correct. And then the doctor <laughs> laughed too. But I was all right. It still works. I'm good. I had to sit down and pee for about three months. I didn't get to have sex for like three months, but I'm good now. There's so many questions. You were in a truck. Yeah. And apparently you could pee in this truck. Right. You, it, the, the, like, the side of the truck, it was like a box truck. It had a cabinet, and it was like adult fucking height. Right, so you just got in there when you had to go when you were in the field, and you just peed right out the hole. Nobody was none the wiser. That is <laughs> that is insane. And then, and then also a customer just walked up to your truck, tried to open the door. Well, they must have seen me climb in that motherfucker. So how do you so explain like, this to the customer? Like, hey, I just broke my dick. Get <laughs> well. I'm pretty sure once the customer saw me crying, they're like, we better leave this man alone. Plus, he's got his dick in his hand. Like, we don't know what the, do we need to call the cops, put him on a motherfucking watch list <laughs> or what? Why is this man walking around with a bloody dick in his hand? Look, I left work. I was like, look, I got to go to the hospital. I broke my dick. My manager laughed at me. The fucking nurse in triage laughed at me. The doctor laughed at me. They just said, put some Vaseline on it. It'll heal. I i tell you what, that was awful. That is a wild story. Yeah, man, there's blood <laughs> everywhere. That is not where you want to bleed from. I don't know how women do it. Yeah. But a dick is not where you want to bleed from. Yeah, to say the least, I don't think you want to bleed from your penis. That's top one worst place to bleed from. Yeah. Question number four. It's an easy one. Transformers or GoBots? All right, so I was listening to your episode with uh, Crystal, Stormy Crystal or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Crystal Storm. That's correct. He was, she was amazing. So me having to follow that, like, it's like, eh, man, he really lowered his standards for this one. But that's <laughs> shout out to Shout out to her, though, because I know you asked her this question. Dude, I heard her mention Battlestar Galactica and shit, and yeah. my fucking geek brain went, Whoa, that shit is my favorite show. But with Great that show. being said, Transformers, GoBots can go suck a fucking dick. Yeah, I agree. GoBots fucking suck. I just mentioned that right? question now because GoBots are fucking awful. I hate yeah. GoBots. Yeah, and somehow they're, they're, they're like, they're still, they're popping up again for some reason. Yeah. I saw some shit at like the dollar store, like GoBots, like what? The fuck is still... this? I ain't seen this shit since I was like eight. And they still suck. <laughs> they are yeah. still terrible. That's the Wish Transformers. Exactly. <laughs> All right, question five, Tyler. Zombie apocalypse happens Walking Dead style. I'm probably going to stop saying oh, that. Right. The, Walking Dead, the Walking Dead's ending soon. Real soon, now that I think about it. But I digress. You're going to take five things to go survive in the world. What five things you're taking, family and pets don't count, because all of them that can go with you, unless you don't want them to go with you, then fuck them, let them die. <laughs> so what are you taking with you? All right, so... So does it matter where I'm starting from? Because we actually do this thing where it's a zombie apocalypse and we have to start from a sex shop. Does it matter where I'm starting You from? can start from wherever you want to start from. If you want to start from a sex shop, fine by me. All right. Well, first of all, I quit smoking about seven months back. But I'm going to get a lifetime fucking... I'm, gonna buy, I'm just going to grab cartons and cartons of cigarettes. Because you know what? Fuck it. It's the end of the world. I'm going to start smoking again. I don't give a fuck. Plus, they could be used as NFTs or whatever the fuck you want to call them. I'm going to trade them bitches for blowjobs or fucking... Somebody's going to toss my goddamn salad for a cigarette. So cartons <laughs> of cigarettes is a goddamn must. You know what? Um, that actually makes sense. I feel like cigarettes is one of those things that people would have cravings for. And they'll do favors for those cigarettes. So that kind of makes a lot of sense. Hey, man, cigarettes will save your asshole in fucking prison. So, I mean. Yeah. People want to trade for cigarettes. Other fucking survivors. Yeah. People want to trade for cigarettes. People want food. Yeah. They, you could probably get some good stuff for cigarettes. So, yeah. That's a good idea. Next, I'm going I'm to definitely have to need uh, a couple good pairs of shoes. 
Because if I'm on my feet that goddamn much, shoes are important, man. Yes. Like, I can't be fucking get my feet can't be getting wet. I can't be wearing wet fucking shoes all the goddamn time. Because that is just, then I'll fucking turn into a zombie. I'll be so good, damn cranky and tired all the fucking time. What else am I going to take? That's hmm. good. Shoes are important. Very important. Look, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take an industrial side. I don't know how far I'm gonna carry it around, but this is my third one, an industrial size um, supply of lube, and I'm always gonna just rub this lube all over me. Okay. So just KY jelly to fuck out myself, right? Okay. And the reason being is ain't no goddamn zombie gonna be able to hold on to me when I'm fucking all lubed up. <laughs> Interesting take. That might actually right. work. I'm telling you, how the fuck you gonna bite me if you fucking... For one, zombies ain't got a whole lot of teeth. They just walking around like sleepy meth heads all the goddamn time. <laughs> that is so, accurate. So if you ain't got that many teeth, them teeth, the teeth you do got, they just gonna slide right off. All right, let, let's that see. That might actually work. I'm gonna need a good weapon, but one that is not gonna just fucking pee, pee out on me. All right, so let's let's take a uh, an all metal hatchet. I think that'll work. Okay, all metal hatchet. All metal hatchet. So there, there's four. Man, this fifth one. There's so much shit you could take. You know what? If there's zombies, right? Like electricity and shit's probably out, right? So I'm gonna take a car door with me. Just the door? That way, yeah, that way. If I get hot, I just roll down the window. <laughs> Modern solutions for the modern zombie times, man. It's going to be an old car because motherfuckers don't actually know why it's rolled down the windows now. Like like, a, like an old Cadillac right door. Yeah. Just going to carry that motherfucker around it to double as a shield. I get hot, I just start <laughs> running and roll the fucking window down. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, tell everybody about yourself for those who don't know. Uh, about myself, I'm a, I'm a comedian, I'm a coach, I'm a podcast host, I am a father, I am a butt play fucking um, supporter. Look, if you ain't licking butt in 2022, you're doing it wrong. If you ain't getting your butt licked in 2022, you're doing it wrong. And tell you what, you ain't lived till you had your fucking, fucking fart box tongue punch. It's just, that's the way it is. Um, but I digress. By the way, I'm glad you used that word. I love that word. Digress is... Yes, good word. Kisses. Good word. Um, but my, my life is consumed by this podcast stuff, man. I, I do uh, about three different shows a week, and then I usually do a guest spot or two a week. So I'm always promoting. I'm always working with new people. And I've got to work with a lot of new people over this last year. And, and man, it, is, it really is an honor working with you. You've been around for Thank a long you. time. Everybody knows your name. Um, you come highly recommended by a lot of people. Jody B, Big Nick, everybody who's anybody in the indie world knows who Delvin Cox is. So for, I the, appreciate for me, that. this is just a fucking honor. I'm just trying not to come too quick. <laughs> I really appreciate that, brother. Yeah, those are my dudes. Jody B, Big Nick, those are my guys. Yeah. So, man, tell me about your podcast. It seems cool. Tell right, so us anybody do, who, who doesn't know about the Inner Idiot Podcast. And how right, did you so come up listen, with it? All right, so the Inner Idiot, it's like, I got ADHD, so I get brain squirrels all the goddamn time, right? Like, I'll be laying in bed. I'll be like, well, well, what happens if you only got one leg? How do you buy just one shoe? Like, do you donate the other shoe? So, like, I'll just be thinking of weird shit like that. Like, how buff would I be if I had Parkinson's and I got a bunch of shake weights? Like, I don't know. So that's actually a good question, right? If Michael J. Fox got a hold of some goddamn shake weights, he's standing up some shit. Like he just hands down, he's gonna be unstoppable. Yeah, it makes sense. So, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these thoughts down. And uh, I started a first podcast before this in a YouTube channel because a lot of people were like, "Hey, you need to stand up." And I'm like, "No, I get stage fright. Like I get up on stage and it's like the first time I see a pre priest pecker. There's way too much fucking." Um, pressure by the way the blood of christ is not always red sometimes it's white and thick so <laughs> pray, 
Look, let me tell you what, pleasing fucking Jesus is kind of hard when you're on your knees all the goddamn time. <laughs> but anyway, so I was like, all right, I'll do this. It'll get me warmed up for stand up. You guys want me to do stand up? This is how we're going to roll. So that died off when, um, in my second divorce. And then I met my current co host and I wanted to start a podcast back up and he has a studio. I was like, hey, man, do you mind if I come in and record? It's like, yeah, come on in. So I come in and record. And I'm like, you know what? Just be on this episode with me. And then it ended up him just being on every episode with me, Lord Shorty. Um, but anyways, we do top fives at the beginning of every episode. And uh, myself and my three co-hosts now, we all do a top five on a specific list. And then we go into another segment, which is either whatever's burning my ass at the time, a conspiracy, some what the fuck facts, um, product reviews. We just, we, it's, it's just fucking random. But if you got kids, like you probably want to put them motherfuckers down for a nap before you listen to it. And cause you, you don't want kids listening to us or we're going to fucking teach them some bad shit. <laughs> I like that. If they're, like ugly, that. Put them, if they're ugly, put them up for adoption before you listen, because I'm allergic to ugly kids. <laughs> you ever so, been trapped in an elevator with an ugly kid? No, I can't say I have, actually. Goddamn, it is a scary motherfucking thing, especially if they're talkative and not funny. <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare, actually. Yeah, I don't think I've been trapped in an elevator with kids for that long. Look, let me tell you what, man. Parents need to stop gassing up their kids, especially when they're ugly, telling these little ugly motherfuckers, you can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. No, you're setting that little ugly motherfucker up for failure. <laughs> you better tell that motherfucker you ever want to get laid. You better be funny. You better be a goddamn doctor. You're never getting no pussy. <laughs> Not happening. Quit gassing these kids up. They ain't going to be models. They ain't going to be actors. They're ugly. Yeah. They better that's a good be point. goddamn funny. So what got what got you into podcasting? What made you say I want to do I want to do the podcast thing? I know you said that you were doing the YouTube thing, and then you kind of stumbled on to a, your homeboy who had a studio. Did he stumble onto your show? Yeah. Well, I just I like making people laugh, so it was an easier way instead of trying to put a video out every time for me because our studio shows audio. I mean, we have videos like teasers, and we do like a Twitch, but. Our main show is all audio. And for me, that allows me to get out some of my good material and, and just make people laugh, make people smile. Like, I'm an asshole, but I still like to make people happy. I know it kind of contradicts itself. Like, you be happy, but you just be happy over there and laugh at the shit I say. Just don't <laughs> come over here. So let, let me ask you this. Have you always kind of been in the comedy? And what were some of the comedians that you liked when you were coming up? Oh man, when I was coming up, it, it was uh, it was Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence was my all-time favorite. Christopher Titus, um, man, Martin Lawrence's run tell that Great. was one of the best stand. It's still to this day one of my favorite stand-ups. Um, this wasn't when I'm I was younger, but Eliza Schlesinger, okay. she is absolutely fucking hilarious. Not to mention, I probably let her throw crunchy peanut butter at me while I sat in a high chair. <laughs> but um yeah so it was just i grew up around sarcastic assholes my whole life so it just kind of it just kind of naturally happened that's dope that's really dope so you kind of just watching the comedians like martin lawrence eddie murphy you kind of kind of just kind of fell into it and kind of felt like they were your people yeah definitely so what made you what to even try to comedy and stuff like that it just kind of like came naturally because a lot of people like comedy but actual comedy is like a craft and it's not an easy craft by the way yeah it, and people don't understand that like people can be funny at a party or whatnot and be like oh i'm a comedian like nah dog you ain't a comedian because you're just saying your joke the loudest you're just saying some outlandish shit the loudest but people don't understand is and this is the difference between like acting musicians and comedians there's nothing wrong with musicians and actors but they automatically have their shit wrote for them most of the time they can redo somebody else's work and and put it off as as a remix or a tribute like 
as a comedian, we can't, we usually can't tell somebody else's joke or, or we're shunned upon. Yes. And the problem with me is, is I, I've written a lot of jokes for people. So I have to stay away from those jokes that I've written for others. And sometimes my brain will mix it up. So I try to like to write down most of my original shit that I haven't given to other people. I'm like, no, if I'm keeping this for myself, I'll write this down. I'll give this out. But people don't understand how hard it is, especially when you do a weekly podcast to write jokes week in, week out. Let me ask you about that. What is your process like when you write jokes? Like, how do you come up with the jokes? Because writing, as simple as it sounds in theory, like, yeah, we're just writing. No, it's very difficult to come up with punchlines, especially if you're writing for someone else. How do you find that voice for someone else when you're writing? All right, so if if I'm writing a joke for somebody else, I have to listen to their stuff extensively. I have to figure out how are they going to react to to different phrases? How are they going to deliver different phrases? So writing for other people is hard. So sometimes I'll just be like, look, this is what you're going to get. You find a way to deliver to deliver it. I'll just give them an outline. For myself, a joke can just be, I'll see a picture of something. And for example, a couple weeks ago, somebody posted on Twitter, this dude that was harassing them and sending them news, she, she fucking posted a picture of it. And this motherfucker had a fupa that looked like a goddamn fanny pack. So I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, fanny pack fupas. I can. There's a joke there, and it, it took me about a week to write it and to get it down. But I got it down, and I set it on. A, I made a whole top five just so I could use fanny pack fupas, and uh, that worked out. But but a lot of times the joke will come from everyday life, like weird shit that happens. And I'm, if you can't tell, I'm a very outspoken person, and so when somebody says something dumb, I'm gonna tell them. If I say something dumb, I'm be like, damn, that was dumb. Why didn't y'all make fun of me for that? So a lot of times I'll take my inspiration just from everyday fucking interactions or shit my kids do. Like, kids just write jokes themselves. Like, that shit's easy. Yes. Being a father is a joke in its goddamn self. A parent, period. That's just living a fucking joke. You just got to realize, what, hey, I can pull this material. I can pull this material. So that that's how I get my jokes. And then in our show, just from... The way the conversations flow, I'll be able to pull one or two out and be like, one of my co's will say something, and it just instantly clicks in my brain. I make a joke out of this in about five seconds. So as soon as they're done talking, boom, joke. I like that. So what kind of plans you have when it comes to your comedy? Is it something that's, I know you said you get stage fright things like that. So it's kind of like tough to like go out there and say, I'm going to do shows and things like that. But do you want to kind of do the thing like when you write for other comedians or work behind the scenes of comedy? That's something that you look, you think you might be interested into doing? See, being on video, that that's not hard for me. Okay. Put my voice out there is not hard for me. I just, I feel like once I can get over that hump, and people don't understand comedians doesn't mean stand-up comedy. That's just a branch of it. Yes. Like, I mean... If you write for somebody else, if you if you're a host of a podcast and, and you're funny and you write your own shit, um, that that's all comedy. If you're an actor and you do comedy work, that's all comedy. Write for so, sitcoms. Right. That's all, all different aspects of comedy. Stand up is just only one aspect of comedy. There are several different branches, whether you're right. like you said, doing a podcast, comedy podcast, whether you're doing writing for sitcoms, whether you're writing for talk shows. It's a lot you can do in the veins of comedy and with your talent. Right. And and I actually have about five stand-ups written, about five 20-minute stand-ups written. And I have a few friends that are stand-up comics that are trying to, you know, like, hey, come with me on this show. Just sit, watch. And uh, I've got a bunch of open mics that want me to come, but like I... Uh, open mics is kind of tricky because most of those people are there are all friends. Like uh, I just, but um, I have a few you, few things I'm gonna try out in the next year. Uh, and then of course stick with the podcast. I love doing it, man. Like I said, I just I love making people laugh, and uh, I love putting my crazy ideas out there in the world. My co-hosts are always ripping on me because they'll always come in with this serious uh top five, and then it gets to me, and I'm like, all right. 
time to get the prey, bitches. And uh, <laughs> so they'll come in like our last top five was top five favorite things about uh our co-hosts. So they come in and they're all saying nice shit about me. And uh, I just come in and was like, my number one was shorty. You got really nice hair. So from the back, as long as you got a shirt on, you look like a woman. I might just bend you over that, <laughs> that desk, man. That's my favorite thing about you. So just dumb shit like that. What has it been like podcasting for you and comedy for that matter? And let's just call it the COVID generation in terms of it's a lot of stuff going on as of late, like whether it's COVID, whether it's cancel culture, whether it's people just being serious about everything, not only cancel culture, that's one small aspect of it, but it just seems like people are just so uptight and wound up from stress and everything that's going on. What does it be like kind of being that kind of guy who has to make people laugh? Well, I, I came in right before COVID hit. Um, right at the end of 2019 is when the show started and um then COVID hit and and I I want to target my audience I want to target those people that are downtrodden that are you know like just fuck life blah 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 like I want to cheer those motherfuckers up as far as how my comedy is is going around like cancel culture politics COVID I try not to touch on politics too much that's a joke in itself i don't need to make a joke about it half the time it, it just it just fucking makes fun of itself um covid i'll touch on it every once in a while uh cancel culture is something else i don't try to touch i don't censor myself but it's not something that like i actively write jokes about a lot of my jokes are raunchy sex related uh i mean i get a lot i've read a lot of parkinson's jokes i mean i know i'm going to hell but I mean, it's just, it's, it's an easy one. And I've donated to the Michael J. Fox foundation. So I feel like I'm allowed to make fun of Parkinson's. Yeah. I think you get uh, Michael J. Fox a certain amount of money. You're allowed to make fun of him. <laughs> look, life goal. I want to play Jenga with Michael J. Fox. Cause I know I ain't going to lose. <laughs> but, um, so that, that's the whole thing. Like during COVID, like if you're in the house, turn on a couple episodes of my show. I'll make you laugh. I'll make you forget about some shit for, for a little bit. I, I might even make you think about some shit that you didn't think about before. That That's that's my goal. I like your output and your outlook on things. I like the fact that you are upbeat. You are cheery. You are being funny. You are not going the route that everybody else is going in terms of Comedy nowadays is kind of going towards the, hey, we have to be edgy just to be edgy, but we have to be edgy in, in terms of anti-establishment. So in terms of what we're going to do is we're going to make jokes about COVID. We're going to make jokes about politics. We're going to make this and that. The way you're handling things, I like it because it's like, no, I'm going to just be fucking funny. I'm going to be Thank as you. raunchy, as funny as I can, and either you get it or you don't get it. I like that. I think that's dope. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. And, and like I said, everybody's nobody wants to hear about fucking politics all the goddamn time. So that's why I just try. I'm like, ah, like I want to. I want to get people out of that mindset when they're listening to me. It's and, and plus, like listening to me talk about politics is like fucking taking driving lessons from Stevie Wonder. Like it's just bad fucking. News. <laughs> I don't know shit about politics. I stay the fuck away from it. Like that's just that's who I am. It's who I've always been. I like that. So, what is it like doing your podcast? Because you, you're the funny one with your co-host, and you're kind of being the funny guy, and you're doing your thing. What is that experience like, bouncing your ideas and your jokes off of them? It, it's great because the four of us are completely different. Like, if you saw a picture of all four of us, you're going to be like, those four don't know each other. But in all actuality, these are three of my favorite people that are sitting in this studio with me. So Lord Shorty, he's this sh he's a short guy. His name is actually Lord Shorty, legally. Um, he's How do you get your name to be Lord Shorty? All right, so he legally changed his name to Shorty, and he acquired the title Lord by buying land in Scotland. That's a whole... <laughs> That's a whole interesting story in itself. I'm telling you, apparently you could do it. 
Like, it, it's not that hard, but he wanted the title, and he already changed his name to Shorty. So he's, to me, he's Lord Shorty Fresh in the flesh all day, every day. And um, he is a comic book expert, a tabletop RPG, like Dungeons and Dragons. He's, he's expert in that. And then we got Miles, Miles Sham, who one time he got a scam letter saying, hey, congratulations on your PhD. Why don't you um, further your education with our, our university? And it was a made-up university. So ever since, he's been Dr. Miles Sham. He's been papping schmears and slapping rears since he got that letter. If you got a pap, you will smear it, ladies. Um, so he's been Dr. Miles Sham, um, and he's just this tall ginger who he's he's into the nerdy stuff too. And then we have Kara Banks. She is an attractive young lady, and and it looks like she don't belong anywhere around us. She is new to the show. <laughs> She's new to the show, and she doesn't – she's not quite there yet. She's getting there, but she's still a little quiet, but she wanted to be on, and um, we needed a female's touch around there. We lost our last female host. Um, she was amazing, though. A uh, shout-out to Miss Ava B., the Duchess of Delightful. Uh, we miss her, but she had to move on to other things. But, yeah, so interacting with those three and, and seeing their reactions – pure disgust at half the shit I say is absolutely amazing. <laughs> so, who are some of your dream guests for the podcast? People that you want to get on, have conversations with, interested in talking to? Well, I've had a lot of, of the people I want to work with, but one of my dream guests, and, and I do a show on Monday nights on Instagram, is this this cat named Delvin Cox. I'd love to have him on my Instagram oh. live, live oh. show on Monday nights. I'm down for that. What time you do your show? We we go Monday night live on Instagram at 9 p.m. And okay. um, a lot of the people um, you probably heard of a lot of people we've worked with. With Big Nick was one of my dreams. Like I wanted to work with Big Nick. Like he is since I joined Twitter, he's like one of the best follows there is for me. Yes, Nick's love following dude. that man. I, I've got to work with Pixie. Um, everybody on Twitter knows Pixie. She's the yes. fucking queen of Twitter. Um, dad's on day cool. I've got to work with all three of them sometimes separately, sometimes at the same time. Um, who else is there? Tim McCarthy. Let me tell you what, if you get a chance to work with Tim McCarthy from 2010 minutes, take it. This man is aces. He's great. Um, comically okay. unaware, but as far as somebody I haven't worked with, I got to work with Jay Armstrong. That was a great honor. Um, he's, he was voted Cincinnati's funniest comedian, stand up comic. Uh, I want to say 2017 or 18. That's really cool. So I got to work with him a couple times. Um, as far as somebody I haven't worked with, is I want to work with Jody B. I got to work with That is easy. Him. That's my boy. That's one of my best friends. You can hit Jody B up here, definitely work with you on some stuff. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for that invite, Jody. Just waiting for that invite. See, I, I had to invite myself to Delvin, but that's all right. It was. It, it, I got up the nerve. I was like, hey, Delvin. You want to have me on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just holler at Jody B. I don't think he's going to do anything. He, you have to get Jody B after 9 p.m. If you get Jody B after 9 p.m., he'll, he'll hop on your show. That's not a problem at all. He's a good well, dude. Well, my, 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 he ain't got Instagram, so he can't come on the Instagram show. And the and the studio show, <laughs> we try to keep um, we try to keep studio show in studio. We have not actually done one of those where we've brought somebody in remotely. Um, just because the lag really fucks with me and, wow. and we, and we have an energy, like it's an in the room energy and it's, it's, it's hard to replicate that over, um, internet or zoom for me. So, but we have had a lot of guests come in. We've had a lot of fighters come in, comedians, um, other athletes. And then we just have our friends in and bullshit with our friends. Cause we have a great group of friends. But yeah, that's, so Delvin Cox and Jody B. That's that's my two dream dream people to work with right there. That is an easy get. You probably can actually have both of us on together, if anything. That's not a problem at all. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, so I got an opening on the 24th for uh Instagram. Just saying. Let me see. I gotta check. I know I'm doing a podcast sometime soon. 
Thank How you. many have you done tonight? This is the third one, actually. Hardworking man. Yeah, I'm always doing podcasts, man. We, we, we'll definitely set something up off, off mic. We'll definitely hook up, and I'll do that. So I'm happy to do that for you, brother. That'll be cool. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, are there any more things you want to talk about before we go? Man, that's it. I just, again, I want to thank you for having me. Uh, if, you, if you're if so obliged, people listening, check us out at Inner Idiot. You can find us on Spotify, Google, um, YouTube. We put a teaser up on YouTube. It's not the full episode. You can find us on Twitch. We do a, a watered-down show on Twitch. It's all things nerdy on the Twitch show. Um, you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. But we really want you to listen on Spotify, people. That, that's our target, is Spotify. Leave those five-star reviews. Delvin, I gave you a five-star review today, man. That was oh, that thank you. episode I listened to. Too. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. No problem, man. I, I pre- Again, I appreciate you for having me. So just, just give me a follow. Give me a try. Listen to the first five minutes of the show. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. Just come in with an open mind and don't don't get offended easily. Yes. No getting offended easy. If you don't like it, you don't have to leave nasty reviews and like that. Just keep walking. If you like it, get a man a five star review. Let him know you like it. Hit him up on his Twitters, his Instagrams. Let him know that he's cool. Simple as that. My guy. Thank you for coming on, brother. As Thank always, you, man. you're welcome, brother. As always, right, Delvin Cox Spears, we are out. Peace.